Hello, how's it going? And today we're going to literally look at some bits of electronics and mechanics and go, ooh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, this is the Mollard high speed valve tester. Well, this specific one, I'm not sure of the exact year and stuff. It does vary on the inside to the ones that I've seen on the internet. So I'm not a little sure where it's from, but it's from, it's a 1950s valve tester. It's used to test your vacuum tubes, your valves, and just see if they're working. These kind of things were in uh, electronic stores and stuff like that. So customers, I guess, would come in with the, with the broken, suspected broken valves and they'd be tested and whatnot. And I'm guess they were in repair places as well and this that and the other and it's basically a multi-purpose piece of equipment that basically gives you the health of different vacuum tubes starting on the top you'll see there's a load of different sockets this is for all of the different types of valves there's the more standard ones like the octal this one's a popular one that fits like nicely on there this i think uh, actually houses uh, stuff like the back of uh, certain oscilloscope crt screens i don't actually think i have any i've had a look around to see if there was any tubes that i had would fit in there but alas i do not on the front is a plastic faceplate. It's got the numbers of the sockets and these will make sense in a little bit. There's a fine adjustment for the uh, mains going into it. And there's a four buttons here for you to be able to test the uh, different parts of the valves. Uh, there's this bit in the middle, which is basically the meter. There's a little power on signal. There's an on switch. And then there's this rotary switch that means you can select between all of the different tests that you need to do. Underneath that, there is this little closed bay with a couple of extra controls. These are preset controls for this, that, and the other. There's the focus, there's the brightness, there's the X shift, and then there's also the reject limit. This is the limit at which uh, the valves are rejected. If they get into the red area in any of the tests after being fully warmed up, that means that they're probably not working and need to be replaced. And I've heard apparently that there used to be shops that were a little bit sketchy and they would adjust this to make uh, pretty much all valves get rejected. And you know, that's, that's playing dirty. That's not playing very nice at all. At the back there is a pull out little area with a little chart in there. It sort of tells uh, you what to do. I guess this is because I guess some employees at shops and stuff who were trained to use this weren't particularly, you know, you would, they weren't specialists and stuff. So there was stuff to follow, information to follow. And then there were all of the different valves you could test. But if you have experience with these valve testers and this valve tester in particular, then please comment your experiences below. So I did a TikTok. Yeah, I know on this yesterday and yeah from what i've heard this is this specific mullard valve tester is a little bit different to others this is a mullard high speed valve tester and it, you would have seen these in shops in like the 1950s and stuff and it was made to test vacuum tubes that customers bought in that they thought were broken so let's test this one it's 6u5 so let's six, look for 6u5 in here doop -a -doop -a -doo. Ah, there it is now we need to find card 960 and the thousands of cards that this comes with there we go 960 as you can see it's got a lot of punch holes this fine tunes a valve tester for that specific valve. Now we need to put the valve in the socket six, a socket six, boom, and there it is. Right, let's pop it in, boom. Push down the lever, adjust the voltage so the dot rides on the line, and now you need to perform all the tests. If the dot stays in the green zone, that means the valve is fine. If it's in the red, it means it's broken, but as you can see, this valve is warming up nicely, and it's going straight into the green. But it doesn't matter, because this is a magic eye anyway, and you can see it's working. So it's fine, it's fine, everything's okay. Okay, magic eyes are for like seeing things on radios and stuff and seeing if it's tuned. How cool is it? It's awesome. So yeah, you were hearing that right. This one is punch card controlled. There is about a thousand of these different punch cards which line up to the numbers on the chart. You basically go through and find the valve you want and then you look at the number on the side. And this basically ascertains which punch card you need to use. This specific punch card is number 960. You can see 960 right there. But there's a whole pile of about a thousand of of these. In here is all of the punch cards. It's pretty crazy. They're, the whole collection of punch cards is probably heavier than the machine itself. And these holes basically set parameters inside the tube tester. And we'll have a look at the actual mechanism of that in a little bit. It's quite a funky material, but it's very hard wearing. And they are really nice. And actually this whole valve tester is in pretty damn good nick. I've got to be honest. I got this valve tester locally. There's a store in town called Island Vintage. And they keep on messaging me when they, uh, when they end up getting things like this and I, I always find it very hard to say no because it's so close and this one in particular is in such good condition and stuff I just it would just be crazy not to say yes to something as lovely as this so it's powered by a bulging connector so I guess we should plug it in and turn it on and see what's what okay so it's mysteriously stopped working so we best 
Oh, oh, it's the reset button. Okay, okay, I got a little bit scared then. I thought it just completely stopped working. It was working perfectly fine. But there's this reset button at the top, uh, which uh, I still don't understand fully the function of it because it only seems to work one way. And I've, I've tried cleaning the mechanism, doesn't do much. But as you can see, it's working. We need to sit and wait for it to warm up a little bit. So the valve that we're gonna plug into this is a 6U5, it's a magic eye. The reason I've chose this one is because, you know, you can see it working and you can see it functioning on the top when we plug it in. Quickly find 6U5. Uh, 6U5 is here and the number for the card is 960. That's the one that was plugged in in the first place. So it's this one. So what we need to do is put this into the machine. I forgot to mention that the card says which socket to plug the valve into. And this one is socket six. And that's where this comes in. It says socket six there, which is right here. So we plug the valve right into there. Okay, let's try this now. Okay, now we push, now we push down this lever and lo and behold, you see it will start to work. So it says what to do on the top and the first thing you need to do is sort of line it up with this. And now you twist this around and perform all of the tests and provided it stays in the green zone, the valve is fine. If it goes into the red for any reason, then it means that the valve is kaflunked. However, to be honest, I haven't really had much experience with this kind of stuff. I've always found that valves are a lot more reliable than other components in machines, capacitors and stuff for instance. And usually, well, all of the times that I have had a valve that doesn't work, well, you can tell from the outside it doesn't work. For instance, the getter material inside has turned white and stuff which signifies there's a leak inside the valve and that's probably the only thing apart from a crack that I've seen not work. I basically just haven't had enough experience with the valves to find one that literally doesn't work and I can't see why it isn't working. Having used guitar valve amps for about 15 years I found that you know they're the reliable bits. The valves are the reliable things funnily enough. Anyway let's go through the tests and see what this thing is doing. Okay so I'll flick it to this one first. Boom 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 yeah it's doing right. Heat a cathode. I don't know what that means. It must mean that it's good, right? It's gone up, it's gone up. So I have a, having a read of this, it doesn't really say much about test number three, so whatever. Oh, oh, try these. Yeah, they seem to be doing it just right. Oh, oh, grid current. <gasps> oh no. So, no. so test number five, which is grid current, is just about to hit the yellow. So it seems like it's fine. The funny thing is about the magic eye is, well, at the top you can see it's actually working anyway. So there's not even much point doing this because you can tell that it's actually functioning uh, if you look at it from the top. But it seems that this valve, as far as we're concerned, is a happy chappy. But anyway, that's a quick look at the function of this thing. Uh, it did actually come originally, uh, these things, with a little tray, a little trolley. So there's like little baskets on the side for all the cards. And then this sits on top. I don't know whether every single one came with it. This one didn't have one when I ended up with it. So whatever. So in order to remove the machine from its case, there's only actually two screws. There's one here and one there. There are a couple of holes at the bottom, but alas, they're empty. This one has obviously been taken apart quite a few times. So all you need to do is just pull the front forward and actually comes away from, oh gosh. And as you can see, this part is separate to this part and this part has the tray in it. So the tray is on the back of the part, but we're not gonna be looking at this. This is really quite a chunky piece. Oh my gosh, that is most of the weight. So on this side, there's a transformer and there's a few capacitors that are looking nice and crusty. I've got these capacitors on the way and I will be replacing them before I have this on for quite a while. Funnily enough, there's not that many capacitors in here and these are the only problem ones right now. On the other side, you'll see there's two holes here and you'll see that there's actually a couple of smaller, more modern capacitors here. So you can see that these two canister capacitors have already been replaced with some blue electrolytic ones. They don't look particularly new, but they don't look particularly old. Ooh. Also on this side, you get the peak of the lever that engages the punch card assembly. And if you look carefully as you engage it, it also opens this switch that turns it on. Ooh. Now it's time to have a peek at the punch card assembly. When you push this, it causes this back panel to squeeze up against these panels. And there's these contacts that get pushed forwards and make connections with these contacts over here. If there's something in the way of these contacts, well, they get pushed back slightly which means that the, the connection isn't made which explains how the punch card works so if we put the punch card in if you see there are no holes except for this one right here so when I push down the assembly all of these push back slightly on the springs and this one is the only one that actually makes a connection and if you look closely at this top row they're all actually connected together so this means that they're all probably connected to different resistor values or capacitors or something and yeah this one is selected selected this one for this specific valve Ooh. 
Ooh, funky. Give it another squeeze down. Ooh, lovely jubbly, lovely jubbly. Sort of like a funky waffle maker, but for weird punch card thingamajiggies. Then if you remove a couple of screws from the side, you can lift the top hood up and you can have a peek on the inside. And as you can see, the internals are pretty damn sparse in there. There's not much going on. You can see the back of the CRT tube right here, and this goes up into the front. When I remove this, there is a tiny bit that has actually been super glued in place. Uh, that was already cracked and stuff. I don't know what the story behind that was, but when you look behind it, you can see the front of the uh, little tube that is there. I've just found something quite interesting. If there are no uh, punch cards in, and you push down the lever, it automatically turns off. Uh, so it stops it from frying because all the parameters are on, which is pretty a nice cool touch. I mean, it's probably a necessity We'll put it down. But anyway, that's just a quick look at the rather wonderful mechanisms within the Mullard high-speed valve tester. It's pretty nice. I'm still trying to figure out what and how and where to sort of exhibit it. It's definitely going to be in pieces because it just looks really quite interesting on the inside. It's sort of got a, like a, a weird typewriter thing about it. Uh, the punch cards obviously do reminisce early computers and stuff like that. By the way, I'm doing a builder's live stream, uh, building a sequencer for a circuit bend speaking spell. I'm going to be doing that over on Patreon, which helps to support this and fund all of these crazy machines that are going to be sitting here. Needless to say, the museum is actually opening within the next two months. Now all of this lockdown malarkey is over. So yeah, anyway, this is the Museum of Everything Else. I hope you like this. If you want to see the live stream, then go and check out over on my Patreon. And yeah, take care.